What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build That Build, a place where when it comes to cutting boards, they call me the butcher. Ah! <laughs> Nobody calls me the butcher. <laughs> I don't think the self-healing mat is coming back from that. <laughs> Uh, honestly guys, this is the first time that I'll be making a cutting board. And cutting boards are big. A lot of people make cutting boards. There's a lot of videos you can watch on making cutting boards. If you're somebody that makes cutting boards and has some constructive criticism or some tips or tricks that they want to leave in the comments, feel free to do so. If you just want to come in and tell me how I'm doing it wrong, GFC. Hit him with the hard T. So for making my first cutting board, I am gonna be making a face grain cutting board. These are not the most popular cutting boards because they will start picking up knife grooves faster and things like that. But with the lumber that I'm working with, I just think it's gonna look a little better. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for my first one. Depending on how this one turns out, I'll probably move on to like an edge grain and possibly even an end grain if I'm feeling slightly insane. <laughs> Those things look really cool. They look like a big pain in the arse. So the lumber we're using today is I have some curly eyed maple. I wanted to get hard maple. They didn't have any in the off cuts. Pro tip when you're making stuff like this, go to the off cut section, it's cheaper. Uh, but they did have the curly eye maple. That's part of the reason I want to do a face grain because the curly eye is is kind of the selling point on this type of lumber, right? Next, I did find this ridiculously awesome uh, piece of wingay. The fact that I'm using this as face grain in a cutting board, I know. But when I look at this, when I look at this grain versus when I look at the edge grain, this grain looks so amazing that we're just gonna, we're going with it, man. We're just going with it. This will probably be more of a decorative piece than an actual functional piece anyway, so we're just doing it. And just to make it a little funky and probably even a little bit more of a pain in my ass, um, I have some Purple Heart. I want to maintain as much of this board thickness as possible because I'm like a little under an inch as it is. I don't want to make this any thinner. So what I'm going to do is just take these over to the table saw, cut them down to the sizes that I think I want them. We'll lay them out, see if we like it. If not, maybe we cut some more pieces. I don't know. Um, I think... I'm gonna make this a little long. I'm looking at my shortest piece here. My shortest piece is like 18 inches. I don't even know if I want it to be that long. I'm thinking about 16 inches, uh, but we'll probably make it a little long. We'll probably go about 18, uh, just so I can scruff the ends at the end. Scruff the ends? Scruff the ends around the middle. Does that make sense? Wait a second. Okay, well I wanna square them off before I'm Finish. So that would be square off the ends at the end. If I do anything else, then it would be square off the ends around the middle sometime and then finish the board. I wish that was a microphone. Boom. And as luck would have it, these are all about the same thickness anyway. So um, once, we, once we cut them down and get the design we want, um, and glue them up. I'll probably be able to run them through the planer and uh, get them flush. But we'll see if we have any gaps and if we have to deal with anything ahead of time. But that's what we're doing, dog. That's what we're doing. I may be looking a little insane right now as I look over this, but what I'm looking for is to see if there's any gaps. My understanding is if you see gaps that are noticeable, you're gonna take the two pieces, flip them out, and then <clears throat> I guess the best thing to do would be, uh, it'd be hit them with a sander. If you have a joiner, you can run them across the joiner so they'll bookend, and then you can put them back, but I ain't got no joiner. So I think if I had any gaps, what I would do is bookend them out like this, just hit them with the sander. I mean, psh, like probably 220, maybe 120, probably 220. Um, and just 
So you want to smooth them out. You know what I'm saying. Smooth them out the same amount. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, anything that's even a slight gap. If I if I push these together with my fingers like this, like I'm, like I'm, I don't know how to explain the amount of pressure I'm pushing. I'm not pushing very hard. Uh, it, any little tiny hairline gap goes away. I think clamps and glue will take care of that. Am I right? If I'm not right, let me know. All right guys, so I'm gonna glue this up and that's basically gonna be it for today. Uh, we'll come back and check on it. We'll come back once the glue dries, uh, make sure that we don't really have any gaps. Hopefully we don't have any gaps. Um, hopefully it doesn't look like this because sometimes when I've clamped things in the past, they a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna try to avoid that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it from the top or I'm gonna clamp it from the bottom and the top. Hopefully I could just put four clamps on it and we're good to go. Cause everything's pretty, everything's pretty tight. Tomorrow. All right guys, we're back with the cutting board. We took it out of the clamps, now we need to scrape the glue. So I do have some glue squeezed out on the back, which is actually kind of what you want. You want a little squeeze out there, that way you know that you got enough glue in the joints. Now, something to take into consideration when you're gonna make something like this is, is what your machinery can handle. This is less than 12 inches wide because I know it's gonna go in my planer and I know that I can cut it with my miter saw and I don't have to worry about dragging my table saw out. So my planer will handle up to 13 and a half inches. My miter saw will cut out to 12 inches, I believe. It might be a little bit more. So I picked the size of this board so I know that I can cut the ends off of this with my, uh, with my miter saw and I don't have to pull my table saw out and I can run it through the planer and I don't have to hand sand the whole damn thing. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind when you're getting ready to make something. Make it in the dimensions that your tools will handle or be prepared to have to like pull out your table saw or if you ever t access your table saw, you know, like in this case, I'd probably need a cross cut sled. I don't have the best cross cut sled for this. So just, you know, kind of keep in mind what you got when you're building. Cool. Now we scrape the glue, run it through the planer. Uh, just, we're, we want to take off as little as possible. We're, we're going to square the ends off and then we're going to route the edges. And then this baby's going to be ready for a little oil. Who do you? Okay, so this has been sanded to 320. What I do is I sand it to 320, I get it wet to pop the grain, and then I'm gonna sand it back to 240. However, I did notice a couple of very small voids on the back. One of them is I did nick one of the pieces of Purple Heart with a blade, so that's that one. Uh, the two ones that I'm a little bit more concerned about are on the edge right here. So we're just gonna fill those with a little bit of black CA glue. If it was on the face of the board, I might think about doing black epoxy or something like that, but I just don't want this to start to separate over time. So this may be my first cutting board, but I did ask a good buddy of mine for some pointers. His name is Vincent Ferrari. I, I'll put his Instagram down here. Definitely go check out his Instagram page. If you're interested in a custom cutting board, contact Vincent. He makes excellent cutting boards. He also does jewelry. He's one of the go-to guys when we're talking about cutting boards. I once heard he made a cutting board that was like six foot long, six inches thick, and he made it entirely out of purple heart and tiger wood. 
It took four people to pick it up and flip it over. No lie, no lie. <laughs> Secondly, I'm gonna be using this wax by Voltner Woodworking. Uh, it's my buddy Matt. Uh, go check out his Instagram. I'll put his Instagram down here. He's got a YouTube channel too, but I think he's more active on Instagram. Uh, but this is a wood preserver that is food safe. I think he said it's uh, like the two ingredients are just mineral oil and beeswax. So not only could you rub it on your cutting board, you could also just rub it on your wood. <laughs> All right, let's get to work. Two hours later. What's up guys? How we doing? What do you think for my first cutting board? Do you like it? I happen to love it a lot. I actually like it better than I thought I would. It's probably one of my favorite pieces to date. It is more traditional and less experimental, but I just like the way it turned out. And honestly, I've been trying to think back to, to think if I had any issues with this. And I mean, anything I had was really, really minimal. So like, to me, this is a very easy project too. So I just, I mean, I love the way it looks. It, and it actually turned out exactly how I wanted it to, but I was thinking what would be cool is to flip flop these colors. So to make the majority of it out of the wingay or a darker wood, and then have uh, the bird's eye maple running through the smaller strips. So I may try something like that in the future, but this is a great gift idea. This is some, it, like, People would consider this some expensive wood, especially the Purple Heart and the Wenge. I think I paid about 30 bucks for the three pieces of wood and I'm gonna make about three or four projects out of a combination of those pieces. If you look at it that way, it's about eight bucks worth of wood per project. And actually this is probably about, this is probably a little bit more, this is probably about $10 worth of wood. But like I said, be smart, shop in the cutoff bins. If you're making gifts, you can fudge a little bit about what kind of wood it is you know i mean like pick up what is there if you have a client that's a little bit more difficult because they may want specific wood species but if you're making these as gifts or something to sell that's already pre-made just go shopping in the cutoff bin man it's a lot cheaper with that said my biggest takeaway from this is just make sure that your fence on your table saw is at exactly 90 degrees because even mine which is way better than my old table saw it, it'll shift just a little bit. And if it shifts just a little bit, then those pieces aren't gonna match up perfect. So just check for 90 every time you adjust it. Speaking of checking for 90, I just like to say thank you to all of my patrons out there. Guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without your support. It is greatly appreciated. So cheers to you. Mm. That TX Stray Bourbon is no joke. <laughs> and a special thanks goes to our top tier patrons, Nick the Greek, Stephen Mann, Eric Easy E Weiss, Derek Coates, Caveman Ross, Chuck Faulkner, The Weekend DIYer, and Michelle Harris. Clinkies! Okay guys, I don't want to take any more of your time. I actually have another video to edit after this one. So, until next time, I gotta get to work. So not only could you rub it on your, <laughs> so not only could you rub it on your, <laughs> so not only could you rub it on your cutting board, you could also just rub it on your wood.